This is probably the most valuable video I've ever made on this channel. This video builds on all the math and lessons that were taught in the last video, which is how gun handling works in World of Tanks. So if you haven't seen that video, check the top left corner for the tag or head down in the video description. There'll be a link there so you can go check that video out before we get into this one. I know you can definitely get a little bogged down in the math. So what I've done in this next video is that every explanation, every calculation, and every conclusion we find, I'll add a single bright green sentence that sort of sums up the lesson that we just covered so that it's much easier to retain and digest exactly what we're going through. The math will still be there, but for those that don't really care about the math and just want to understand what it means, look for those green tips. Also, if Equipment 2.0 has already launched, make sure you go down in the video description and see if there's a link to an updated version of this video. All right, with all the doobly-doo out of the way, I'm your Watt Coach, 13 Disciple, and this is how gun laying drives, vents, vert stabs, and food all affect gun handling. I am so excited about this video. All right, we're starting this video with a correction from the last video. If you recall, when we covered aim time, the tooltip in the game says basically for one unit of aim time, the reticle would decrease to 40% of its original size. For those of you that looked on the Watt Wiki, it says that for one unit of aim time, the reticle decreases to 33.3% of its original size. So the question remains, which one is accurate? Well. You're not going to believe this, but the answer is neither. Neither of those are accurate. So what actually is in the game is an exponential decay using Euler's number. Don't freak out. You don't have to know this math. What you really need to know is just this. One unit of aim time will decrease the reticle to 36.39% of its original size. That's the actual value in the game. All right, now that that's out of the way, moving on to the Enhanced Gun Lang Drive, or the GLD. So if you look at one of these in-game and you hover your mouse over it, it says that the Gun Lang Drive adds 10% to the aiming speed. So if we pull up our trusty M26 Pershing, right there in the middle you'll see 2.21 seconds is the aim time. So if we use this text over here, then you would think that 2.21 times 0.9 or 90% of its original value equals 1.989. That should be the new aim time, right? Well, you're wrong. And I was wrong for a very long time. I opened up a separate window just to compare tons of different tanks in the game client. I did with and without, with and without, with and without GLDs. And I did the math on a ton of them and none of them came out right. Not a single one actually made any sense to me. So I came to the conclusion that gun laying drives don't actually decrease your aim time by 10%. I spent a long time scratching my head over why the numbers weren't adding up. So what I did when it usually comes to these sorts of scenarios where I'm confused by math, I did what I always do and I asked my wife for some help. <laughs> yeah, my wife is way better at math than I am and yes, I totally married up. So after a few minutes of pondering this dilemma, she said, well, what if the old aim time is 110% of the new aim time? So I thought, oh, well, that could be. So we did the math. 2.21 divided by 1.1 equals 2.01. That math worked. I started checking it on all of my compared tanks. It worked on all of them. What does that mean? It doesn't make any sense. Let's put it in terms of dollars. So let's say I'm selling a tank at $50, okay? I'm gonna give you a 10% discount. That means that you could buy the tank for $45. What if instead I said, I'm gonna improve the price by 10%? Well, that means you can buy the tank for $45.45, which is a discount of about 9.1%. Yep. That means that gun laying drives actually reduce your aim time by 9%. The tooltip in the game is pretty misleading and that's the second one today. So whatever you do, please don't tell the guy that's wearing the tinfoil hat. What's this now? Let me say that again for everybody that's sitting in the back row. Gun laying drives do not decrease your aim by 10%. It reduces your aim time by about 9%. 
There's one other thing I want to tackle while we're on the subject of the Gunlang Drive. There's a myth floating around out there that the Gunlang Drive only works when your vehicle is stationary. That's false. If your reticle is shrinking, whether you're moving or not, the Gunlang Drive is making it happen 10% faster or reducing it by 9%. All right, let's move on to the vertical stabilizer and explain how that one works. So if we look at the image in the game and we hover our mouse over it, we'll see that it says minus 20% to dispersion during movement and turret rotation. So what does that mean? So if we pop over to our T34-3 and look at its statistics, basically you just multiply those stats by 0.8 or 80% and you get your new dispersion penalties. Yep. It's pretty straightforward, or your new dispersion penalty is equal to your old dispersion penalty times 0.8. Simple as that. Basically, vert stabs reduce all dispersion penalties by 20%. However, there's another myth I'd like to talk about when it comes to vertical stabilizers. The myth is that vert stabs only work when your vehicle is moving. That's also false. Vert stabs are always reducing your dispersion penalties. So if you're stationary and you fire your gun, it's still reducing the dispersion penalty caused by shooting your gun. Anytime that you even adjust your movement a micro amount, it's reducing your dispersion penalty by 20%. All right, let's go over to food and vents. So if you hover over the vents in the game, you'll see the tooltip says plus 5% to all crew skills. And if you look at the food, it basically says plus 10% to all crew skills. But the question remains, how does crew skill impact vehicle performance? Well, there's math for that. Don't get bogged down in the math. We'll reduce it down to an explanation in a minute. But for those that want to know and understand the math, for a degressive stat, meaning a stat that gets better the lower it is, that would be like your aim time or your dispersion penalties, this is the math that describes it with the effective skill level there is what these will influence. Or if it's a progressive stat, such as view range, where the higher it is, the better it is. This is the part that will be, uh, this is the equation that governs that sort of math. So effective skill level equals for, if it's a 100% skill crew, then it will be 100. And then your vents will add plus five to it. And then the commanders provide a 10% bonus of their training to all crew members. So if every crew member is roughly the same training level, then you just multiply this by 1.1. But you can't do this for statistics that are only driven by the commander. So view range is, is driven by the commander. So that would be 100 plus five, but you wouldn't multiply 1.1 because the commander does not provide a bonus to himself, only to all the other crew members. The other thing you really need to know is that this is all linear. So as you increase in ex as you increase in crew experience or effective skill level, you'll also increase in vehicle performance and it's linear. It's not exponential. It just goes up straight linear. So with all this math, you don't really need to know it. What really matters is knowing that it improves your crew for every 5% better your crew is, it improves your vehicle performance by about 2.2%. Okay, so I know in these two boxes, the numbers are actually the same. That's because tanks.gg rounds it up. For all the math that we see after this slide, I use unrounded numbers, so it still will make sense there. So basically, we can boil it down to this. Every 5% of crew scale improvement increases vehicle performance by 2.2% and all of the increases are linear. So for example, if we had a 10% improvement such as case of COLA, that improves our skill level all the way to 10% and then that will improve our vehicle performance by 4.4%. All right, let's move on to start comparing all of these pieces of equipment and we'll start with probably the one you wanna know the most about which is the gun laying drive versus the vertical stabilizer. So let's grab our trusty M26 Pershing. We'll say he's driving 30 kilometers an hour. He's rotating his hull at three degrees per second. So he's driving straight and turning and he's turning his turret at five degrees per second. If he stops all of those at one single point, this is what his aim time will look like. So we can observe that the vertical stabilizer is fully aiming his tank before the gun laying drive does. 
So in this instance, the vertical stabilizer is much faster and it also has lower dispersion. So if you try to take a shot anywhere before fully aimed, you're still better off with a vertical stabilizer. So I thought to myself, what is the worst gun handling tank in the game that I know of that can take a vertical stabilizer? And I came up with the T49 running the 152 millimeter gun on it. So if we take this vehicle, we run them at 50 kilometers an hour, we rotate his turret at five degrees per second or his hull at five degrees per second, and then we turn his turret at 22 degrees per second. What does his aim time look like? Well, we come up with this. So we notice that the longer the aim time is, the less of a difference there is in terms of fully aim time versus gun laying drive and vert stabs. However, vert stabs, if you fire any time before you're fully aimed, will have smaller dispersion, a tighter dispersion than the gun laying drive. So it got me thinking, at some point these two will converge and then they'll begin to diverge with the gun laying drive being faster. So is there any point in the game where that becomes true? And I thought, well, what if in theory, and I know this is all ridiculous, but we're going to run it with it. All right. So just hang with me. If you were to take a T-92, the artillery piece, you were to run him forward at his maximum speed, which is 32 kilometers an hour. You were to turn him sideways at his maximum rotation speed, which is 20 degrees per second. By the way, I'm not sure you can do both of those at the same time. You also had a turret speed of 8 degrees per second, which is the arc, the gun arc moving at 8 degrees per second. And you also fired the gun. If you uh, add all of those into the dispersion equation, how bad would it be? And we see, even though it's super long, it's over 12 seconds to be fully aimed, the gun laying drive simply doesn't outmatch the vertical stabilizer. So pretty much the better performance of a V-Stab, it, it diminishes the longer the aim time is, but in the game, there's no theoretical scenario where a gun laying drive will be better than a vert stab. So as you equip your tanks, always, always, always mount a vertical stabilizer over a gun laying drive when possible. Yes, I know you can mount both at the same time, but when you're trying to choose between one or the other, always go vertical stabilizer. All right, let's compare gun laying drive to vents then. We noticed that there's no competition between vertical stabilizer, but what about vents? So let's start off with a tank that can't actually take a vertical stabilizer, which would be the 4K5. So if we drive the 4K5 at 20 kilometers an hour, move him at five and turn his turret at five degrees per second, let's compare these two vents and gun laying drive. Well, we can see that as we get through the aim time, they do converge and then they do diverge. So somewhere within the first third of the aim, the complete aim time, they come together to about the same time and then gun laying drive gets the advantage towards the end of the curve. So then I thought, OK, so maybe it makes sense to have gun laying drive on a vehicle like the 4K5. But what about a regular tech tree tank like that T20 or the M26 we looked at earlier? So if we pull up the M26 Pershing, we use the same stats we had before, and then we compare these two again, we can see instead of a third, it's about halfway through the aiming cycle where they converge and then they diverge again. So then that made me wonder, well, what about a tank that has crazy good, uh, crazy good gun handling, such as the M48A5 Patton? So if we throw this, so I use a hull speed of eight and a rotation of five and a turret speed of 15. So this is me thinking that I'm poking up a ridge line and turning my turret to aim at different, different targets. What would the aim time on that look like? And we can see that we become fully aimed at the point of convergence. So let's take all of that, all of everything we've learned and put it into maybe kind of a simple rule of guidance, okay? So basically, if your aim time is greater than three seconds and your dispersion penalties are greater than 0.3, the gun laying drive is gonna provide a better aim time advantage. So when it comes to aim time or aim times that are greater than two seconds, but less than three seconds or dispersion penalties that are greater than 0.12 or less than 0.3, Really, it depends on your preference. And we'll we'll get into that in an example in just a second. So then that rounds out the bottom. 
When your aim time is less than two seconds and your dispersion penalties are less than 0.12, vents provides about the same aim time as gun lang drive. And since vents provide even more benefits than just aim time, always choose vents and tanks that have really good gun handling. So let's take the T-34-3 as an example. This vehicle has 2.9 seconds, so we're at the top edge of our either or. 0.16 in moving and 0.16 in tank traverse. So we're pretty much square in the middle in terms of either depends on your preference. So which would I choose? If my goal is to improve the gun handling, then this little equation here basically says, well, you can choose which one fits your tank better. So in this regard, I would probably go with the vents because that's going to give me better snapshotting. And more importantly, it's going to lower my full accuracy of that 0.44 even lower so that I can hit targets further away a little bit easier. All right, let's go back to our original example of the 4K5. Let's say I've got gun rammer, vents and gun laying drive all mounted and I want to add optics, but I don't know which item to drop, gun laying drive or vents. So if we look at our original 4K5 with the same settings and we look at this graph, uh, I understand this graph might be kind of hard to see. This was filmed in 2K resolution. So if you go down to the bottom right, click the gear icon and select 1440p, it might be a little easier for you to see. So if we look at it this way and we say, OK, well, Vents gives me an aim time of 6.45 seconds. Gun laying drive alone will give me an aim time of 6.07. And when I combine them, I get an aim time of 5.87. If I drop gun laying drive, then I add 0.58 seconds to my aim time. I'm adding half a second to my aim time if I drop gun laying drive. But if I drop vents, I only add 0.2 seconds to my aim time. But there's another half of this equation. Part of the reason that gun lane drive extends your aim time so much longer is because your fully aimed dispersion is only 0.394, whereas without vents, your full aim dispersion is 0.403. So then you have to ask yourself, is half a second more aim time worth the extra 10% view range? Or is adding a little bit to my dispersion fully aimed worth it for 10% more view range or is neither of those sacrifices worth it for more view range so this kind of gives you an idea at least a little bit of what the difference is is when you can drop vents or gun laying drive in terms of vehicles that can't mount vertical stabilizers so let's talk about food real quick Gun laying drive versus V-stab versus food. So let's start off with your typical tech tree tier eight with mediocre gun handling. I know this graph might also be a little bit difficult to see. What's really demonstrated here is that food will actually converge on the gun laying drive before it'll converge on V-stabs. So in this instance, food gives you somewhat in between and then converges on GLD. So if we look at something with even longer aim time, such as that T49 from the beginning, we see that it'll first converge with the gun laying drive and then all three will converge at right about the seven second mark. So if we look at something with crazy good gun handling like the M48, we'll see that they never have time to converge and that the food is actually much better than the gun laying drive. So basically what this tells me and allows me to recommend to you is that food on its own by itself without anything else is better than a gun laying drive by itself. So you could potentially use food as an alternative or an improvement over a gun laying drive, which is expensive because you're spending more credits per battle than one single purchase of a gun laying drive. However, keep in mind that vertical stabilizers by itself still outperforms food. So food is not really a good substitute for missing a vertical stabilizer. Keep in mind that the food consumable doesn't replace equipment. Um, it will just stack with those improvements of the equipment slots. I'm just trying to demonstrate what the differences are when you look at these things by themselves. So there's another uh, point in time where I was confused on which piece of equipment to use on a specific vehicle, and that would be an autoloader. So how does an autoloader work when you're combining gun lane drive and vents? So if we take, say, the tier 10 Batchat 25T, and we say he's not moving, he's not turning, and he's not moving his gun, and all he does is fire, so we're only looking at the penalty for um, having fired, the dispersion penalty on that, 
Well, this is the graph is, is how it would look. So if we look at this graph and we know that his interclip is 2.73 seconds. And so if we look at this, we say, okay, with vents plus V stab, our full aim time is 2.92 seconds. With gun laying drive plus V stab, our aim time is 2.75 seconds. So really the full aim difference between gun lane drive and vents in this instance is only 0.19 seconds. It's two tenths of a second is the difference. And neither of them gets us below the intraclip reload. So in this instance, I would actually recommend vents because it's going to improve your overall clip reload speed. It'll improve your gun handling. It'll improve pretty much everything about your vehicle just a little bit. Um, and you're only sacrificing two tenths of a second in terms of reload dispersion. So that's one of those things. But there's also another question I was wondering, and that was, when can I drop vertical stabilizers? When is it okay to drop V-stabs? And this one is even more nebulous, but we'll still look at it anyways. So when do you drop these? If we take a vehicle like the T100LT, which actually has better dispersion values than even wheeled vehicles, Let's bring him up to 60 kilometers an hour. We'll say he's rotating his hull at 15 degrees a second and his turret at 15 degrees per second. What does his full dispersion even look like? So when we look at this graph, I don't want you to look at the bottom right hand corner. The aim time isn't what I really care about here. What I really care about is the very first part of this graph, which is my maximum dispersion during this activity and what the difference is. So with V-stabs, our dispersion is 1.36 meters, and with vents, our dispersion is 1.59 meters. So at full dispersion, the difference at 100 meters, so if we're aiming 100 meters away, the difference between vert stab and vents is only 0.23 meters on the radius, or 0.42 meters diagonal um, wider. So the question is, is that worth it? Well, if you look at it from 300 meters away, you're adding 0.69 meters to your radius. Does it make sense? In my opinion, the aim time isn't super important, so I wouldn't be mounting vert stabs for aim time. I would be mounting them for on the move accuracy, and I don't have a good answer in this. I think what you'd have to do is play the tank a little bit with vert stabs, and then play the tank a little bit without vert stabs, and see for yourself which of the gun handling characteristics might work better for you and your play style. So the next question is, gun lane drives are almost useless. So with equipment 2.0 on the horizon, I looked at it and said, maybe there's something I can advise the developers on, on improving at least the gun lane drive. Make it worth taking and not something that I settle on for tanks that can't take vertical stabilizers. How would you do that? Well, if we take our M26 Pershing, your traditional average gun handling tier 8 tank, we go back and we see, yup, vert stabs are killing gun lane drive. There's never a reason to mount the GLD. What if we improve the gun lane drive to 30% aim time or a reduction of about 23% on the aim time? Well, it produces a graph that looks like this, where if I'm taking snapshots up front, anytime before two thirds fully aimed, then vert stabs are going to be better for my vehicle. But for a vehicle that's fully aiming every single shot, then maybe the gun lane drive is better. This sort of change would actually make gun lane drives more interesting in the game because it would allow people to make decisions on whether I want to place more importance on getting snapshots in or if I want to place more importance on fully aiming and making sure I can get fully aimed as quickly as possible. So. Let's move on to a summary. <laughs> so here's all the green text that we've looked at throughout the entirety of basically this video with a couple of white text for our myths. So this is, in a nutshell, how you are comparing gun lane drive to vents to vertical stabilizers to food. Now, there's still a few other items in terms of crew training that impact how gun handling works in the game. And that would be something like smooth ride, um, and snapshot. Those skills do impact your gun handling. Same thing with Brothers in Arms. So in the next video, we're going to focus on how exactly those crew skills work and whether or not they're useful to train for your crew before other 
perks or skills. So make sure that if you found value in this video and you really want to see that next one, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you click the little bell to be alerted when it comes out. And guys, this video took a lot of work to put together. I'm probably 20 hours into this whole video and that's before editing. If you found value in this video, please like. And if you have more questions about this, I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday in the evenings. So feel free to pop over to my Twitch channel and just ask your questions there live and I can help maybe run you through some of these math and I could even pull up my spreadsheets and we might be able to even plug in a specific vehicle that you have questions on. So guys, it has been an absolute pleasure and we'll definitely see you in the next video. Take it easy. My wife actually made me this hat. <laughs>